Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about level 40 raid, and this is not essentially a tutorial or a guide, but there probably will be some nuggets for those who have not done the raid to actually kind of get to the point where they do it. Um, now that we, you know, the world is going through all of this and some people are like, you know, at home, there's a lot of uncertainty, but many of us are praying, you know, hoping that we'll be able to get back to our regular activities and people can get back to work and all of that. But then, you know, some people have the opportunity to spend a little bit more time with family and some people can take a little bit of a breather from work and play the game. And this is where I think the video comes into play for those who are playing the game now because of their stay home uh, situations. What I would encourage you to do is find raid groups from specific places. Now, I know that in the past um, we've talked about, you know, using Discord servers for different content creators. I do have a Discord server. Um, there are people in there. You can go in there. You can look for great groups and all that. And that's uh, very helpful, in my opinion. But there are also other places that you can find raid groups as well. It, the My division uh, Discord is just one that we made and put together and just slapped my name on it. There's an admin that's not even, that's very busy, that basically doesn't even play the Division game often because the Gaming Daddy community is a very chill community. Like, we don't hardcore much uh, out here. It's just really calm and chill. So you can check that Discord out. But then there are also other content creators that are in the community that also have their Discord channels that you can use to get raid groups in place for any um, platform you are. I'm going to mention some names. Cold Boy ha has um, a Discord server. Jetforth has a Discord server. I think Nothing But Skills has a Discord server. Um, Clint Flywood has a Discord server. So if you're watching any of these creators, you can go into their Discord servers and look for raid groups. No one's trying to sell you anything. You, it's just a nice division community for you to be able to meet like-minded division players who will be able to get, you know, in, get together and play the raid. Another resource is the division's official Discord. This is where I usually go whenever I like asking um, in my Discord or my friends are not online and, you know, we have different schedules. I go into division Discord sometimes because sometimes there are not enough people online in North America on the Discord server or whatever. And there, you know, there are people from Europe who are at home at the time that I'm home and I'm able to jump in and play with them. A lot of my raid completion groups have been a mixture of people from the US and Europe and everywhere else around the world because it's more about opportunity for people to be able to get together and do that. So that's the first part, getting the raid groups together. The second aspect is informing yourself and learning about the raid and learning about the systems. I feel like a lot of people uh, are not yet knowledgeable about the raid. I remember um, I played, I beat, I beat one level 40 raid just the other day just because I wanted to get uh, ongoing directive. That's all. I'm not trying to get the Eagle Bear. I opened the chest and get the Eagle Bear because it's like, well, that's usually my luck. And I noticed that the raid that I played before that, we were four in the group who had completed the raid. The other four had not completed the raid and basically did not know the systems. So it's one thing for you to not complete the raid. And then it's another thing for you to not know the systems. You can watch many YouTube videos on how to complete the raid. I'm not going to promote my raid videos. I'll just give you the ground to say go search. There are many uh, you know, options. You can check mine out if you really do want, but there are other content creators who have also made raid guides. And don't look for the speed run guides. Look for the detailed raid guides first so that you can understand the systems. And then you can then implement it. Because when you're going in with the group, you can assume that everybody would have watched the same number of videos you've watched. So you want to inform yourself. The more informed you are, the better your reactions, the better your situational awareness, and you can actually complete the raid and, you know, clear out the systems that are in place. Because the biggest difficulty about the raid is, um, you know, the team not paying attention to what's going on. I think that's where the difficulty is. When you're paying attention not only to what you're doing, but to even other aspects of the game, you'll figure out that there are so many areas where the raid is actually bigger than uh, an eight-man group. It's something that stretches every individual player unless a team is 100% now running at a synchronized state. So give you an example. Say you're a boomer 
and you have somebody that's designated to the computer screens and somehow that person gets boomers aggro and has to run away from that area and takes and you know well that person now has a different you know responsibility so they have to run boomer to a machine gun or a, um, a mounted gun and then somebody else has to now take over that person's place and that person could be anybody, but it could be everybody as well. So if everyone has a situational awareness, they're going to see the computer screen light up and say, oh, it's Alpha, it's Bravo, it's Charlie or Delta. Some of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, which is more reason why I feel like a lot more people in the community should go and look at the videos. Another thing is Buddy and Lucy. Many people don't believe that Buddy and Lucy is a max three minute encounter maximum buddy and lucy should not take more than three minutes and so i remember we played with you know this group of a lot of new players and they kept complaining saying oh you know i can't believe lucy just did this and you know buddy did that he keeps healing and i'm like yeah it's the mechanic relax and i had to kind of talk them through because i could have just said i'm out because when we started the group and he said how many people have already completed the raid i kept quiet in the discord group i usually didn't say anything and i went with my i went with my uh, second account so nobody could figure out if you know it was me or not so i just shut my mouth and you know when nobody answered some people dipped out immediately yeah i'm not gonna deal with this and you know i don't blame them they've spent the time you know, investing and learning the systems and have played 30, 40, 60, some 200 of these raids. So I can't blame anybody. But I was like, you know what? Let me see what it feels like to actually carry people through the raid. And it was a little uh, interesting to say the least. And then one thing that I do notice too was the raid is actually much easier than your regular heroic or legendary content. Honestly, the enemy NPCs, uh, the raid is balanced in a sweet spot. I just hope nothing, I hope they don't go tweak the foundry too much and ruin the experience because the difficulty, the damage dealt, the damage taken from enemy NPCs is actually much better right now with the raid. In fact, I feel like the raid felt more more enjoyable because we carried four brand new players all the way through Razorback before I had to go to bed. And that was a big feat. I mean, I don't think back in the day, there's no way that was possible, you know, but now that we've developed this toughness from the open world and toughness from heroic and legendary missions, you play the raid and you say, oh, no, this raid is a joke. I mean, I don't even think the raid can exist in legendary mode. That would be too much. It would just be impossible and not impossible but it would just be something that's unappealing for a lot of players uh in that aspect and then there are other benefits to which there are specific brand sets that are raid exclusive now when you say this i've seen community reactions of people saying oh i just checked out honestly the and the experience of the raid uh and you getting the blueprints and the items are actually worth it. Now, you know, people might say, but why is something like this raid exclusive? Why doesn't he, why doesn't it become something that drops in the open world uh, all the time? And why, why does it negate solo players? Now, many of you may not know, but I've said this before, I'm a big solo player, but when I have to jump in a group, I do everything that I can to find a group to accomplish content that I want to accomplish. And yes, some raid groups just don't work. Some people are jerks. They come in with all their life problems to a video game. And in that instant, just bow out if you can't handle them. And I've seen it in many instances. You know, some people lose their cool. Some people are not patient with everybody else. Some people are more direct. If you play with Europeans, they're very, Europeans compared to Americans are very direct. And we Americans might see it as, you know, it being insulting, but it's another thing about another another aspect of cultural awareness. A lot of, let's say you play with somebody from like, I don't know, the Dutch and the Germans. You're going to get it like clear cut. It's not going to be minced in any way, if you know what I mean. But in America, we consider that as in some cases, nonetheless, as, oh, this seems like a jerky kind of move. But, you know, some people are not trying to be jerks. They're trying to get the raid done and trying to get people through it. That's another thing, too. Some people value the time and the efficiency, so they require for people to pay attention. I remember taking, you know, groups of new people, and all they kept doing was goofing off. We said, don't shoot here. They'll do the exact same thing we say not to do. I'll say, stand here. They'll run to another direction. And I kept telling them, if you don't do what I say, you're. Go I know you don't want to take instructions. You're acting like, you know, you don't need to listen to anybody, but you'll keep dying from Lucy. And it shows your redundancy. So finally, after like nine tries of Buddy and Lucy, they had to listen to what I told them. 
and then they got the raid done. That's just what I, I guess my patience level, I think I went into teacher mode. For those of you who know what I do my, prof my, you know, my profession, I went into that mode straight and then I started giving, cutting. That's why usually I don't, I don't do that. But once I started cutting out instructions, some people probably maybe rubbed off on them wrong, but who cared? It was already midnight, and I was like, if you guys don't listen, you will never progress past this place. Everybody was talking all kinds of stuff, and that's when I kind of bowed out and left. And then when we got to Razorback, somebody kept you know, suggesting something asinine that I just said, yeah, this process is definitely going to, going to take never. We will never accomplish this raid. So be willing to listen. I think that's another thing. And, you know, people come with assumptions. I didn't go in with my main gamer tag, so people don't know that I actually know how to do the raid. And I've done enough of it. I think I've did. I think I've done 17 or however many. That's all you need anyway. You need, you need 10, and you'll get it all down. You'll be able to do everything. You'll be in every position, every station. You'll understand all the mechanics and, you know, everything that goes with that. So final thoughts. Play the raid right now. Um, you you should be fine. Your build will work if you want to go damage. Uh, I wouldn't do the regular healer type builds that we do for legendary. I just think you go with the sustainable build. Something preferably that has like unbreakable or has the tardigrade armor. Uh, don't go in there with like a full on skill build. Those enemy NPCs, they'll just make you look stupid. Go in there with the gun build. Uh, go in there with some sustainable build. If you want to go high damage, there are places that they can position you on the team. But largely learn the systems, watch tutorials, watch playthrough videos, watch speedrun videos. And be willing to adapt. Because when you go in there, not everyone's going to have the information that you already do have. But, you know, you're going to and just, you know, you're going to learn something. And then in order to top off this entire thing, just have fun. It's a video game. I think a lot of people are way too serious about this. They just take it way over the top. Unless you're a hardcore player and you play for a living or you play for... Uh, and you're an enthusiast kind of player, which most enthusiast players will not play with casual players anyways. Uh, they already probably have a core clan of 8, 9, 12 people or a dozen or 30 people that will always run with them. Then most likely you're going to be playing a casual style playing. So allow room for error and then just be, be ready to spend some time doing it. But once you accomplish it, you will understand the entire um, the entirety of everything. So that's my video for today. Thank you so much for your time and audience. I appreciate you guys. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.